I've been playing around with ChatGPT quite a bit over the past few weeks. And one of the random questions that popped in my mind was, can ChatGPT build me a PC? So I built four PCs in the past year, all small form factor ITX, based on varying budgets. The process can usually be divided into four phases. Phase one is research. Typically, it revolves around finding out what components you need to get, then the price range for each component, and putting together something that fits the total budget. If you are building a tight budget PC, then you would likely look for components in those ranges. For example, using a GTX 1650 instead of an RTX 4090. But you also want to make sure that the parts scale together. For example, there's no point in pairing an overly powerful GPU with a budget CPU. I did an old video on this previously when I paired a Celeron CPU with an RTX 3080 and it didn't really go that well. Once you have all the components in mind, then comes the shopping phase. Sometimes you won't be able to get certain parts because they run out of stock. Then you have to start looking for alternatives. Perhaps if an ASUS motherboard is out of stock, then you might want to consider Gigabyte, MSI or even ASRock. Once you have all the components purchased, then comes the assembly phase where you put everything together. This part really comes with experience and practice. You can follow online guides and also flip through the manual, but everyone has to start somewhere with that first PC build, and over time, you get more experienced and better at it. Then finally comes the last phase, the first boot. If all goes well, it turns on fine, and you get to install your operating system. If not, then you have to spend some time troubleshooting. Is the problem with the motherboard, CPU, RAM, maybe the power supply? Did I forget a power cable somewhere, maybe? Or the cable wasn't fitted in fully? So let's see how ChatGPT fares with all this. So phase one. First of all, I wanted to confirm if ChatGPT even knew what parts to buy. Did it know all the components necessary for a PC build? Well, there was only one way to find out. Building a gaming PC can be a fun and rewarding experience, but it requires some knowledge and research to ensure you choose the right components. Here are the essential components you'll need, CPU, the CPU is the brain of your computer and handles all of the processing tasks. You'll want to make sure you choose a case that's compatible with your motherboard and has enough space for your components. Optional components include additional storage devices, cooling systems, and peripherals such as a keyboard, mouse, and monitor. ChatGPT easily answered the first question. But could it suggest to me specs within a certain budget? Sure, here's a list of specifications for a mid-range gaming PC using an ITX case for less than SGD3000, with the latest AMD CPU, CPU, AMD Ryzen 5 5600X GPU, NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3060 RAM, 16GB DDR4-3200 motherboard, ASUS ROG Strix B550-1 gaming storage, 1TB NVMe SSD power supply, Corsair SF600-600W80 plus gold fully modular SFX power supply cooling, Noctua NH L9i Chromax, Black Low Profile CPU Cooler Case Lianli TU150 Mini ITX This configuration should be able to run most games at high settings without any issues. Amazingly, it was able to. And this build was very similar to one of the builds I did recently too. Basically a Ryzen 5600X with a 3060. But I don't think I would have used a low-profile cooler with a case like the Lianli TU150. I wanted to see if it could spec something around something newer, like the AMD 7600X CPU. I'm sorry, but the AMD Ryzen 5 7600X CPU doesn't exist. The latest Ryzen CPUs as of my knowledge cutoff date in 2021 are the Ryzen 5000 series, and they use DDR4 RAM. Additionally, DDR5 RAM is not yet widely available for consumer PCs as of my knowledge cutoff date, although it is expected to become more widely available in the future. However, I can suggest an updated configuration using the AMD Ryzen 5 5600X CPU with DDR4 RAM. I tried this twice, but ChatGPT admitted that it wasn't familiar with this CPU, because its knowledge base was only up to 2021. Aha! Uh -huh. But I like that it recognized that flaw and admitted to it. What if I wanted water cooling? How familiar was it with ITX cases that supported water cooling? I tried asking that question. Yes, there are some IT cases that come with built-in water cooling. 
Here are a few examples. For NZXT H1, this IT case comes with a pre-installed 140mm alloy liquid cooler for the CPU and a built-in 650W power supply. It suggested to me a few cases, including the NZXT H1. But I was actually looking specifically for the Cooler Master NR200P Max. I guess I would just have to ask it directly. Yes, the Cooler Master NR200P Max is another IT case that supports water cooling. And of course, it did not disappoint. It turned out the whole description of the case. Now, to ask it to update my specifications with that case. Sure, here is an updated configuration based on your request for an IT gaming PC with water cooling, using the Cooler Master NR200P Max case, CPU, AMD Ryzen 5 5600X GPU, NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3060 RAM, 16GB DDR4-3600 motherboard, ASUS ROG Strix B550, gaming storage, 1TB NVMe SSD power supply, Corsair SF600 600W80 plus gold fully modular SFX power supply cooling, Corsair H100 IGB Platinum SE 240mm liquid CPU cooler case, would it also know the relative performance of such a build? Based on the configuration we have put together, you can expect a very good performance in Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, with high frame rates at 1080p resolution. According to various benchmarks, the RTX 3060 can deliver average frame rates of around 130 to 140 FPS in Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 at 1080p resolution, with settings set to high. Of course, actual performance may vary depending on the specific game settings and system configuration. Overall, this configuration should provide excellent gaming performance in Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 and many other modern games as well. ChatGPT even gave me an estimated frame rate in Modern Warfare 2 for 1080p builds. Thanks, ChatGPT. Time for me to go shopping. You're welcome. If you have any other questions, feel free to ask. Oh, but wait. The enthusiasts and PC Master Race folks out there are now probably thinking, no, you don't need the Corsair SFX PSU and H100i water cooling. The nr Donor p Max comes with those parts built in. Indeed. It seems ChatGPT was not that familiar with the bundle of the nr 200 p Max. So, of course, I mentioned this to our good friend, who promptly corrected the specs list once more. Sure. Here's an updated configuration that includes the Cooler Master NR200P Max case, and PSU, and water cooling bundle. The build I did in the end used an AMD Ryzen 5 7600X with an MSI B650i ITX motherboard, an RTX 3060, 32 gigs of DDR5 RAM, and a 2TB SSD. Better and newer specs compared to what ChatGPT gave me, and still well under my 3000 Singapore dollars budget. Echoing ChatGPT, I would say that this updated configuration should provide great gaming performance with a compact, water-cooled build that's perfect for an ITX setup. So I went out and picked up my parts, and then it was on to phase 3. I asked ChatGPT for help, and it promptly churned out a list of instructions on how to assemble the PC. It even noted down tiny details such as watching out for the RAM notch, clicking the CPU into place, making sure to tuck away excess cables, and not blocking airflow. Not bad. And finally, the last phase. Unfortunately, the PC indeed did not boot, and I struggled for a bit at first to figure out why. Could ChatGPT help me through this? If your PC powers up and the fans spin, but there is no display, and you see a red light on the motherboard, it is likely that there is an error with the hardware or a component is not properly connected. Here are some steps you can take to troubleshoot the issue. <laughs> If none of these steps solve the issue, it's possible that there is a hardware defect with one of your components. In that case, you may need to contact the manufacturer or a professional technician for further assistance. Check cables, unplug everything unnecessary to do a bare bones test, clear CMOS, test each RAM stick and slot individually, check the GPU connection and power, reseat the CPU, 
I did everything that was suggested. I even updated the BIOS via USB, but I was still stuck. But eventually, it turned out that the problem was pretty simple. The motherboard light errors hinted that the issue was related to the CPU, and after some googling and scrolling Reddit, it seems that this was not an uncommon issue for the new AMD CPUs. The problem was that it would take very very long for the first boot, and even for subsequent boots, it would take a very long time to boot up. After waiting for well over a minute, the PC eventually did boot up and everything was actually working fine. Nothing much I can do about this for the moment until AMD and the motherboard manufacturers resolve this. But I was still very impressed with the results from ChatGPT. So what's the conclusion and takeaway here? I think at the end of the day, an AI is only as good as the dataset it possesses. But I was still very, very impressed. Tony Stark's Jarvis was starting to feel very much like a reality, rather than a work of fiction. And I would love to see how these AI technologies continue to develop. Now the next question I want to answer is, if I tell ChatGPT the specs of what I built eventually, along with the price, how would it then answer the same question the next time someone asks it? Maybe you can try ChatGPT for your next PC build. That's all for today. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you enjoyed this video, we'd appreciate it if you hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. If you like PC build related videos, you can also check out this one featuring the Coach Z13 ITX case that I'm currently using.